to Asian News with me, Vanessa. Indonesia president received Chinese COVID-19 vaccine shot to fight against coronavirus diseases. Terlepas uh, dari bahaya pandemi COVID-19. Indonesian President Joko Widodo became the first person in the country to receive a COVID-19 vaccine shot at the presidential palace, the vaccine that developed by China's biopharmaceutical company, Sinovac Biotech. As the government launched an ambitious vaccination campaign in a bid to stem one of the worst coronavirus outbreak in Asia. The president shows no adverse reaction after being observed for 30 minutes following the vaccination. He calls on the people to actively receive vaccinations against COVID-19. Representatives from different circles in Indonesia witnessed the vaccination at the site. The whole process was also live-streamed online. The president, widely known as Jokowi, is the first Indonesian vaccinated to show that the vaccine is safe. Budi Gunadi Sadikins, Indonesia Health Minister, who also due to be vaccinated, says nearly 1.5 million medical workers will be inoculated by February followed by public servants and the general population within 15 months. Sriwija Air Victims family hoping to get a good answer about the accident after finding black box. Families of Sriwija Air's victims expresses hopes for answers to the cause of the crash after a black box containing the flight data recorder of the Boeing 737-500 jet was retrieved. The Boeing 737-500 plane with 62 people on board plunged into the Java Sea afternoon for minutes after taking off from Jakarta's main airport. Supeno Hendi Kuswanto came to the hospital to claim the body of his son, Oki Bisma, who are identified as the flight attendant of the SJ-182 flight. I hope his body is still in good condition. I could claim my son's body, but they tell me to wait for two days to get more information from the ongoing search process. It's been two days already. The plane was on domestic flight to Pontianak on Borneo Island, about 740 kilometers or 460 miles from Jakarta before it disappeared from radar screens. It is the second major air crash in Indonesia since 189 passengers and crew were killed in 2018 when a Lion Air Boeing 737 MAX also plunged into the Java Sea soon after taking off from Jakarta. China and Myanmar discuss with strength and bilateral ties cooperation in the future. During the meeting, Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi, with Myanmar's State Councilor and Foreign Minister Aung San Suu Kyi in Naipitao, both leaders vowing to strengthen cooperation. Wang says China firmly supports the smooth administration of the National League for Democracy government and backs the Myanmar side in safeguarding national sovereignty, security and development interest. He adds, China is willing to continue to support Myanmar to fight the COVID-19 epidemic. And China is also willing to work with Myanmar to implement the five-year plan for economic and trade cooperation, speed up the construction of the west, north and east ends of the China-Myanmar economic corridor, promote an early implementation of the Kyokpyu deep sea port. In addition, Suu Kyi says the Myanmar site attaches great importance to Myanmar-China relations and hopes to deepen mutually beneficial cooperation with the Chinese site. The Myanmar site puts great emphasis on the China-Myanmar economic corridor construction and is willing to jointly push forward relevant projects. Myanmar thanks China for providing COVID-19 vaccines and hopes to further expand exports to China as well as to enhance cooperation of labor service. She adds that Myanmar is willing to promote the further development of China-ASEAN relations. One is on four-nation official tour which will also take him to Indonesia, Brunei and the Philippines. South Korea sends COVID-19 test kits to Bolivia amid lack in vaccines. South Korea sent COVID-19 test kits to Bolivia, one of the Latin America's poorest countries, as it awaits the arrival of coronavirus vaccines. Bolivia's richer neighbors like Chile and Argentina already begin vaccinating its population and La Paz hopes to get vaccinations in the country in late January. 
Russia sovereign find Russia Direct Investment Funds agreed to supply Bolivia with enough of its two-dose Sputnik V coronavirus vaccine to vaccinate 2.5 million people, marking the South American nation's first major vaccine deal. The Latin American country signs up to the Global COVID Initiative, which is backed by the World Health Organization and seeks to ensure equitable distributions of vaccines. The government says they also hope to vaccinate up to 20% of its population in the first quarter of next year through COVAX. Until then, the government is stepping up testing of citizens so as to get a lead on the spread of the vaccine. So far, Bolivia reports 175,000 coronavirus cases and over 90,000 deaths. World Health Organization team arrive in Wuhan to investigate the origin of the coronavirus. An international team of scientists led by the World Health Organization arrived in China's central city of Wuhan to investigate the origins of the coronavirus that sparked the pandemic. It's still helpful for them to come at this moment. China is the first place where the epidemic happened. It will be helpful for them to find out the origins of the disease at where it first emerged. The group arrive on a budget airline from Singapore and expect to head into two weeks of quarantine. The team left the airport terminal through a plastic quarantine tunnel marked Epidemic Prevention Passage for international arrivals and boarded a cordon of bus that was guarded by half a dozen security staff in full protective gear. Team members did not speak to reporters, although some waved and took pictures of the media from the bus as it departed. The team arrived as China battles a resurgence of cases in its northeast after managing for months to nearly stamp out domestic infections. The World Health Organization calls on the world to collaborate trace in the region of the coronavirus. World Health Organization spokeswoman Margaret Harris stresses the importance of global collaboration in researching the origins of COVID-19 ahead of WHO expert team's visit to central China's Wuhan city. In a recent exclusive interview with China Global Television Network, Harris explains that part of the expert team's investigation will be about the animal source of the coronavirus. So you look at animal health, what's going on in the different animal populations, which animals are most similar in terms of this particular disease to humans. Then you try to look at serology in the animals, are there antibodies? You look at uh, uh, the stories of the people who were first infected, where did they go, who were they in contact, what happened. You look at laboratory uh, samples and laboratory studies and you put all this together, you sit together, you go through it systematically and put your minds together and say, okay, this is what we know so far, what do we need to know and how are we going to find out those things. Harris also applauds the unprecedented level of global solidarity amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, which she says increased the chances of discovering the origin of the virus. Now, having said that, our scientists are equipped, better equipped, are super smart, are really good at what they do. I mean, in a year, we've already got vaccines against That's this. Right. That's never happened. So we're in a place where we can understand, we can learn more, more quickly. And we've got this fantastic global collaboration and cooperation, which also hasn't happened before. So our chances of understanding more are ever greater, especially because we've got everybody working together. A team of 10 experts visits Wuhan, city that was affected by the coronavirus outbreak when it first struck China. Later research found the presence of the virus in Spain, Italy and the United States earlier than what was first reported in the central Chinese city. A Cambodian court has begun hearings in the treason trial. A court in Cambodia convinced for the treason of scores of opposition figures, one of a series of cases seen by activists as moves by the ruling party to sideline threats to its political monopoly. This is also part of uh, the, the, the effort to sort of uh, 
you know, kill the chicken and show it to the monkeys, uh, is the old saying, to try to scare everybody else from saying anything. Uh, this is an intimidation tactic by the government uh, to show that if you speak out, if you say something, if you stand up for your rights, if you dare protest, you will face prison. It, it's outrageous, it's unacceptable, and, and uh, shows that uh, Cambodia is sliding uh, headlong into dictatorship in a way uh, that is a complete and total betrayal of the Paris Peace Accords. Uh, it's a betrayal of the promises by uh, all factions in Cambodia to uphold human rights and uphold democracy. And it's a violation of Cambodia's uh, obligations under various international human rights conventions, which they have ratified. They basically ratified everything, and uh, they're violating it all. The defendants are among 121 people affiliated with the dissolved Cambodian National Rescue Party who are charged with treason and incitement. 61 opposition figures have been summoned to appear in court. Muso Chua, CNRP's deputy president, who is in the United States, tell Reuters in the text message, it's not immediately clear how many will show up, given many are in exile, fearing they will not get a fair hearing. The CNRP was banned and its leader Kem Soka arrested before an election in 2018 allowing Prime Minister Hun Sen's Cambodian People's Party to win every parliamentary seat, prompting international concern. <laughs> Thierry Seng, an American-Cambodian lawyer, who was among those due in court, says she had a right to express opinions, including the right to express dissent. Chinese President congratulates Tong Long on election as General Secretary of Laos People's Revolutionary Party. Chinese President Xi Jinping, also General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee, sent a message to Tong Long Sisolit congratulating him on election as the General Secretary of the Lao People's Revolutionary Party Central Committee. She notes that since the 10th LPRP Congress, Laos under the strong leadership of the LPRP Central Committee, headed by Bonhang Vorachit, have made important progress in the course of socialist construction, enjoyed political, social stability, sustained economic development, and continuous improvement of people's well-being. He expressed his confidence that under the leadership of the new LPRP Central Committee, headed by Tong Lung, the party will surely lead the Lao people to unite as one and strive for greater achievements in Laos' socialist cause. China and Laos are friendly, socialist neighbors connected by mountains and rivers. She adds that bilateral relations have continuously deepened and developed thanks to the careful cultivation and strong promotion of successive generation of leaders of the two parties and countries, continuously creating benefits for both countries and their people. He also suggests that both sides may concert efforts to carry forward their traditional friendship, deepen exchanges and cooperation, promote their socialist causes, and push forward the building of the China and Laos community with a shared future, so as to make positive contributions to safeguarding regional peace, stability, prosperity, and development. Philippines President Duterte says presidency is not a job for women. Philippines leader Rodrigo Duterte declares that the presidency are no job for a woman because of their emotional differences to men and dismissed a speculation that his daughter will succeed him next year. And my daughter, in Manila. I have told Inday not to run because I pity her, knowing she will have to go through what I'm going through. The Philippines had a two women presidents Gloria Machapagal Arroyo from 2001 to 2010 and Corazon Aquino from 1986 to 1992. Duterte is notorious for comments often deemed offensive, sexist and misogynistic, but his office typically calls his remarks harmless jokes. He remains hugely popular among female voters in the Philippines. His daughter Sara Duterte Carpio, who succeeded him as a mayor of Davao City, came to top in a recent opinion poll that asked the public to choose a preferred candidate from a list of possible contenders for the 2022 elections. Thailand is in fact badminton courts as world tournament players test positive for COVID-19. Thailand officials says the badminton courts used to hold the Thailand Open are being disinfected daily as a part of a standard procedure as some players initially tested positive for COVID-19. 
Official says, as a precaution, all players and their teams have been swab tested for COVID-19 infections and all kept in bubble inside the arena while the tournament is held as closed session with no spectators. The Talent Open is the first tournament of the Asian leg of the Badminton World Federation World Tour. Four players, including India Shuttler, Saina Nihual, and men's world number 28, HS Pranoy, tested positive and was initially withdrawn from the Open. However, three of the four players are allowed back in the tournament after returning positive antibody blood test. A positive antibody test means a person has been infected with the COVID-19 at some point but does not mean they are currently infected. Thank you for watching and please be remember we are still in the pandemic era. Stay safe, stay healthy by washing your hands, maintain social distancing rule and use your mask. See you.